face. And today we're going to talk about economy. We're going to talk about uh, helping people in their daily life. I'm with Diane, and we are going to talk about universal basic income. Yes? Yeah. You yeah. are ready? Uh, I'm ready. <laughs> <Good>. mm -hmm. <laughs> Welcome to Face to Face. Thank you. So you coordinate uh, the, the, the work of um, informing the people about universal basic income. You can say that. I can say that. Yeah. And, but before maybe we go into, in more in detail, you can explain briefly what are we talking when we talk about universal basic income? That would be a good way to start. Well, to me, I mean, the generally accepted definition is that it's an agreed upon amount of money provided by the government that is sufficient to meet certain basic, basic. human survival needs. Mm -hmm. So it's, you go on a little bit on the line of we were talking about the, the, the universal declaration of human rights, Article 25. Yeah. Yes, yes. To and provide. Right. And I guess I should also add that the universal part of it is very important because yep. the universality dictates that every single person in a, in a particular nation uh, who is a citizen of that nation would get that. And amount it's of money. not a class story. So it will be everybody, regardless of their income. Yes. through work and so on and so forth. It's a yes. universal for everyone. Yes, yes. Every ad Well, uh, mostly the proposals are to give it to adults. Children is a little bit More different. More yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, so in New York, what what happened a little bit, and, and we're going to talk about a big march is coming up, but what, what how does it go in New York City? What What is the... The, the work has been done. I know we, a couple of months ago you had a conference and... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, um, you know, we've had the good fortune that uh, US Big, the uh, US Basic Income Guarantee Net Network, which is a group that is, you know, as far as, I, I guess the analogy would be, you know, they're sort of veterans of the UBI movement. Mm -hmm. They've been around since 1999, and uh, we've had the good fortune that they've, they often will hold their conferences, or congresses rather, in New York City. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and they, they, they sort of happen in other places as well, but um, they've held uh, some of their conferences in New York City, uh, so that is something that is happening, that happens in New York. Uh, when they come here. But we also have, since about um, 2015, we've, we've had a group in New York City called Basic Income NYC. Okay. And I'm one of the integrants of that group. We're sort of a ragtag bunch, um, not all Americans, but uh -huh. all New Yorkers, if yeah. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, interestingly and not enough, not all New Yorkers um, were, were born in New York or even in the United States, but they're still New well, Yorkers. It's a big percentage. <laughs> in some neighborhoods, it's still, over 50% right. of the but population. They're, but they're still New Yorkers they in spirit, York, you know, exactly. and, and so we have a good, good participation of people who are not from New York but live in New York, um, some from overseas, and um, we've been holding something called basic, when we started out in 2015 or so, we called them basic income movie nights. And they were a sort of universal basic income uh, 101 for people to find out the basics of the proposals and talk about how it would affect their lives and their communities. And that sort of has evolved a lot. And um, you know, we've been we've been using that to grow the movement for universal basic income. And um, over the time that we've been doing that, some groups have grown up in other cities as well. Uh, they're relatively informal, but they're very active. Uh, there's one in Minnesota. There's one in Seattle, um, and uh, one in California. And and it's it's been really good. And, and of course, uh, you know, in the past, since about middle of 2018, we've also had the added. Uh, the added bonus that we now have um, a New Yorker running for president named Andrew Yang, who is exactly. So no, so now politically, it's becoming a big 
big story. Yes. And so yes. you have one candidate running for president. Yes. Who is on the nine of the selected candidate, no, more or less, mm -hmm. right now, it's between nine yeah. and ten. It, yeah, he's, he's, he's really, um, he, we, we're very fortunate that we have someone that not only understands why we need a universal basic income, but is able to articulate it in a way that is really approachable. And mobilizing and, people. And mobilizing people, so we're, we're happy about that. So people are connected to the issue. Uh, in New York, we will see uh, people running for Congress. We have people running for Congress also. We have, uh, well, I don't, I'm not going to be able to rattle off all the names, but we have James Felton Keith in yeah. District 13. We have uh, Jonathan Herzog. I'm not going to say which district because I'm not positive and I don't want to get it wrong, but he's in New York and he's running for Congress. Uh, both UBI uh, supporters, um, James has been an activist for it for a, a long time. And there, there are others as well. And um, actually, one of our, uh, one of our, our visions in the whole uh, universal basic income movement is to um, identify from our many, and probably at this point, hundreds of thousands of people who are interested in universal basic income to identify people who will run for office on this particular policy. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I know. You asked me this question. So, <laughs> um, so now, okay. So now let's go to the side of the people. What, what? Let's say we we, we do it in New York City to to give to give a sense of of, of the story. Mm -hmm. um, what what will what, what? How does it will work? Um, it's relatively simple. Yeah. If you are. If, if you're an adult 18 or over um, and you're a, an American, you will get your universal basic income of, uh, well, a proposal that's most popular is $1,000 a month. Yeah. And that's completely non-taxable and never taxable. And you would just receive it as a matter of right. Um, you know, it would be essentially, it, essentially it would be um, a means of, upholding uh, American society to some of the provisions of the Universal Dec Declaration on Human Rights about, you know, uh, that the government has to assure a certain standard of living, however that may come about. So um, in a, you know, in a neighborhood of a thousand people, you get a thousand, a thousand dollars times, you know, a thousand, thousand adults. It would uh, generate a lot of economic activity. It would make it that people who are living on the streets uh, would have other options. It would eliminate the need for them to participate com in a compulsory fashion, as they have to do now with um, helping bureaucracies. And I only say, I don't, when I say helping bureaucracies, I don't necessarily mean to say that no uh, social services bureaucracy is is uh, is useful. I don't mean that at all, but um, it's certainly any time from a policy standpoint, any time you um, you put sort of a middleman between the um, the hard resource that the person needs, which is the cash, and you put that a, a bureaucracy between that person and the cash, you make it more complicated. It, it just makes it so complicated yeah. that it actually endangers the life of the person that needs things. Yeah, and that's what the UBI will eliminate. S and then, so, so s for some people, he, uh, the, it's, it's like the difficulties will be that people don't want to be dependent of. It's like the welfare story. It's, it's like they don't want to depend of of the government. They don't want to get things from the government. Mm -hmm. So how do we on answer that question? How do we go about transforming that vision? Uh, so it's a vision. So just I understand the question. So who's thinking that? Is it is it we the people thinking it, or is it 
still you know, we I, the I leaders. Mean, I've, I reached out to a couple of organizations, and mm -hmm. one of them was uh, who worked for immigrants. They say, you know, uh, no, we, we don't want to depend of of, uh, of, of, of the government. It is, is we don't want to be on the welfare story. Mm -hmm. So I mean. Mm -hmm. The organization depends on the government. They get grants from, from, so I know they, they get some money right, from, so from some places. Dependent. So they are dependent. So, but, but I think it's, it's, um, it's I, I'm telling you this because we, mm -hmm. when I work on the voting rights uh, for many years, and it was also the same complication with uh, immigrants in New York, where mm -hmm. they felt that they didn't have the right to vote in New York City, where they pay taxes. I mean, if you see why the U.S. become independent of the of of the U.K. was because, you know, people who pay taxes should have representation. Right. And so, mm -hmm. if I'm in New York and uh, I pay taxes, I should be able to vote at at least at the local level. And when you know the budget of New York City, it's a big chunk. Mm -hmm. So, but it was complicated. It was a complicated to share that. Uh, 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 empowering people through political means to get the right to vote was not simple to share. And, and it, it, it was more, uh, the, the, the people who were supporting the legislation were people who, don't who are already citizens and who don't, don't have the problem of no representation. So that's where um, it, it's, um, it, it, it's, uh, it's uh, you, I think we need to see how they will go about um, t for people to be able to uh, uh, understand it such a way then um, uh, Jeff K is he say we owe we owe they owe us no right actually we owe us is we the, owe us is that's the way the best word, that yeah. we talk about it and so it's just you know I don't know how many uh, I don't know if the organization that you spoke to really is. Um, uh, representative of the American psyche as the American psyche is right now. Um, they're, they're reliable. There's some reliable data. Uh, I saw, I don't remember uh, what the source was, but it was in the Washington Post, so, uh, so we can give it some credi credibility there, mm -hmm. um, that about 60 percent of Americans in, in surveys support the concept of a universal basic income at wow. this time, yes. And I think that, um, you know, sometimes when I hear, uh, knowing what I know as a social worker, because I've been a social worker for 14 years, and I've seen, you know, the, uh, the hoops that people jump through when they have a, medi you know, a, a mediating party between them and cash assistance and all of the damage that is done. And so I think that as the country as more and more of us become, you know, we're, we're living in, in greater hardship and precarity, yeah. even people who are middle class, even people who, who are relatively well off that I, who I know, who, you know, they, they don't seem to relax either because it, they feel like any moment it could be lost. Oh, yeah. And, um, and it could be. I mean, if right. you have an health issue, you are done. I mean, it, right. it, 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 it goes quickly. So, so, you know, I think that there's more Americans now uh, who, who don't feel, you know, who, who, wouldn't, who wouldn't say that they agree with the statement, you know, we don't want to depend. Sh sure, we don't want to depend on the government for, um, for frivolous things or for things that don't make the, 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 the society any better. But with all the data that show that um, you know that income cannot be gotten now in the sort of traditional way that we have always thought about it, as you know, an income transfer for your labor from an employer to you, I think that more and more people don't. They wouldn't respond. Well, I don't want anything from the government. Yeah. In fact, I think a lot of people feel like more and more that they are contributing members of society, and yet they're not reaping the gains of the society they're seeing around them. And as the concentration of money goes, because it's, it's even, I mean, it's becoming yeah. absolutely yeah. crazy. So that yeah. would be one way also to be able to try sure. to rebalance a, li a, li right. a little bit the, the yeah, imbalance. And if, it, absolutely. And, and if I can give sort of an example of, um, you know, to look at it from another angle just a little bit. so. Um, so in terms of justice, in terms of justice, um, 
Very few people, I think that very few people, except for people who are living in precarity and, and poverty, understand that the system that we have now to um, take care of people, you know, the income, the only income transfer system that we really have for people who are, are living in families with not enough money, that that uh, system, which is called Temporary Assistance for Needy Families, that system no longer serves the purposes that then you were that, from. right that the that yeah. the social security act um, had created it for mm -hmm. um, back then it didn't even do it uh, as efficiently or as justly as it should have a lot of a lot of groups were shut out of it um, but now since 1996 with the reforms that were done um, largely won through the rhetoric the false re rhetoric of you know Poor people don't work enough. Poor people need jobs. Yeah. Um, you hear a lot of this stuff, even from Democrats yeah. now. You hear yeah. it a lot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the dignity of a job. Well, you know, th that program is a federal money. It's about thirty-two billion dollars a year, and they leave on the table. We collectively across the country, the administrators leave three billion on the table every year, and it rolls over. And, you know, there's been stories from, from Maine, uh, you know, the state of Maine, uh, where they accumulated, you know, just shamelessly accumulated $155 million by 2017 when they had just kicked 8,600 families from the, from the, from the rolls. Yeah. So between 2012 and 2017, yeah. taxpayers were paying Right. And being and those tax paying citizens were being told, you know, the government is taking care of these people. We have a mechanism to care for them. And at the same time, in that period of time, they kicked eight eight thousand six hundred families the off the rolls. And that includes fifteen thousand children yeah. in Maine. Yeah. During that same amount of time, they accumulated one hundred and fifty five million dollars in unspent money. Yeah. Now, that's. That's an economic injustice yeah. because you've just you you told the federal government that you needed that money to meet the needs of your citizenry, and there is no doubt in my mind that well that's the corruption. I mean, it's corruption. Yeah, it's uh, corruption, I mean, it, it's, and it's, you know, there in a certain sense, what you could say is state administrators um, in the states who are not uh, managing this program ethically. They're depending from, on the federal government, right? And then they're misusing or not using the money or misdirecting the money, um, and lives are being lost yeah. and futures are being compromised. So, so you know, there's there's all kinds of dependency, and I think that people don't, you know, I don't think that Americans view themselves at, in the same that same like. Uh, you know that whole bootstrap thing, and, and, and the whole relationship yeah. between work and, and 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 money and time spent has to be rediscussed. I mean, I work on computers, and I'm telling you, we can take job every day. We can. That's not an issue, but but during the times the computer do the work, who who's getting the money? Then this computer does the work. No one's getting the money, so mm -hmm. it, it it doesn't make any it doesn't make any yeah. sense. So that, I'm all for the, the the basic income. I'm just. Uh, wanted to to cover this issue uh, because it's going to be it's it's people have to think about it yeah uh, and and things have to be uh, transformed uh, and 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 redistribute in any way and it has to be done quickly and it has to be done at the scale uh, who is um, who is very important because right now the concentration it's absolutely disgusting so yeah it uh, is yeah. Um, there is. Um you know, with with regard to that, if you had like a real case example or a real case hypothetical, right, of of a universal basic income to uh, to a family, a poor family with two children and a mom, for example, in um, in, in let's say Louisiana, Louisiana right now um, that that family gets about two hundred and forty dollars a month, and they have to she has to engage in you know, some kind of sanction work activity. Yeah. If you do the math on, you know, you divide 120 hours of compulsory work 
and you divide it, yeah, you know, it's, into it's, 240, it, you're it, paying her about two dollars an hour. Yeah. It's um, like the people in jail. Yeah, so the yeah. state administrators are violating, mm -hmm. the, you know, any mm -hmm. concept of minimum wage yeah. um, by doing that. And if if that same woman, the next, you know, in 2020, got a thousand dollar a month UBI without having to do any compulsory, um, usually denigrating and tough, um, you know, work kind of situation, of 40 hours a week. She would have her time back to use in ways that enrich her family yeah. or enrich, you know, her situation. And Plus, it enrich the whole neighborhood. I mean, it's not the just whole the people. Neighborhood the whole neighborhood well. is going to be. Right. The whole business is all. Exactly. Long. I mean, it's, it's everybody profit of right. that story. Plus, she would have four times the amount that she's getting now. And the amount that she's getting now is about, you know, 13 percent of a poverty line income. And mm -hmm. and. You know that situation is enough to put her children in danger yeah. and to put her her and health the, in and danger. And for her to lose the children too. And for her to lose the children, yeah. which is a phenomenon and that, then, that and happens. And then, so after that, they, they become dependent of the of the uh, of uh, shelter and so on and so forth. Now it's a very right. complicated story. Very yeah, complicated. Yeah, it's very. It's, and and it's, people make mistakes, yeah. and then it happen, and then blah blah. And no, no, no. It's it's yeah. a disaster. Quickly, the march. We need to talk about the march. So we're having, um, you know, all that said, uh, you know, that's that's uh, the universal. We we were sitting around and we thought, you know, let's uh, the uh, the people at Basic Income NYC and the people at the Keith Institute. We were, you know, sort of sitting thinking what we what should our next move be to promote universal basic income, uh, given the the really favorable uh, spin. Spin that we have yeah. and and it's and everything. Moment. It's a it's the moment yeah. to do it, yeah. you know. And so uh, we decided that we're going to do a basic income march. So we're doing this, and um, we've already gotten word that uh, that Berlin is going to do a march. You know, we're waiting to hear. We're we're in conversations with many places to okay. see if what, we can do it in those other places. Yeah. So it's sort of taking. Uh, Taking on an international flavor and it's very exciting. Yeah. So website quickly. So our website is um, basicincomemarch.com. Our and Twitter handle, our Twitter handle is Income March. Okay. And we're going to start. But you can get all this information on the website, but um, it's going to start in front of the Bronx Post Office on Grand Concourse, oh, great. The, bi the big one in the South Bronx, yeah. and we're going to mm -hmm. march over the the bridge, the mm -hmm. little bridge there, yeah. and walk up the hill um, of West 145th Street. It's about a mile walk. Okay. So we're saying it's one mile for one thousand dollars. Great, perfect. Thank you so much for coming. Anything Thank else? You. you uh, want to no, I think uh, I think that's we'll good. Cover. Okay, yeah. good. Okay. All right. That was your show uh, face to face, and please keep watching your news on Presenza.com, and uh, hope to uh, hear from you very soon. Thank you very much.